Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Jungle to Jungle. Jungle to Jungle is a 1997 theatrical release. It's directed by John Pasquin, cinematography by Tony Pierce Roberts, editing by Michael A. Stevenson, music by Michael Convertino, and it's written by Bruce A. Evans and Raymond Gideon. John, Tony, Michael, and Michael, I've all covered in previous videos, they'll be listed and linked in the description. Bruce A. Evans and Reynold Gideon are a writing team and they are best known for Starman, Mr. Brooks, and Cuffs. The film is based off of a 1994 French film called Un Indien dans la Ville, which stands for Little Indian Big City. And it, that film did not do well. Roger Ebert, who actually had watched the French film hated it and was hoping that this one would make it better. The film stars Tim Allen, Sam Huntington, Martin Short, Joe Beth Williams, Lolita Davidovich, Lily Sobieski, and David Ogden Steers. Tim Allen plays Michael, and I covered him in the video about the Santa Claus. The link will be in the description. Sam Huntington plays Mimi Siku and is best known for Detroit Rock City, Fanboys, Not Another Teen Movie, and Superman Returns. Martin Short plays Richard and is best known for the Santa Claus 3, Inherent Vice, the Three Amigos and Inner Space. Jo Beth Williams plays Patricia and she's best known for Poltergeist, The Big Chill, In the Land of Women, and Kramer vs. Kramer. Lolita Davidovich plays Charlotte and she's best known for Hollywood Homicide, Blaze, Adventures in Babysitting, and Cats and Monsters. Lily Sobieski plays Karen and is best known for Never Been Kissed, 88 Minutes, In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale, and Joyride. David Ogden Stairs plays Jovanovich and I covered him in the video about Beauty and the Beast, the link will be in the description. The film had a $32 million budget and made $59.9 million in the box office, which isn't terrible but it's not great it's pretty average mediocre-ish and it has a 19 percent on rotten tomatoes roger ebert hated the french one like i said and then he was hoping that this one would do better and he was incredibly disappointed he said the film was very forgettable i also noticed and this might be really random but the uh disney logo opening the doo -doo 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 was like majorly orchestral like it's normally an orchestra obviously but there was just like it was like a beefier sound um, that I noticed, which was really weird. I was dreading this movie. I went in totally expecting to hate it. I re remember being shocked at actually how deplorable Tim Allen's character was in The Santa Claus that I was expecting to hate his character Michael in this the same amount or just, you know, not before it. I will say it was a little better than I expected it to be. I was expecting to be very mad at the movie and just be like, this is stupid. And I didn't think that, I didn't get mad at the movie. Although, like, I wouldn't say I'm mad, but there's just pieces of it. It, it. it follows a lot of the same issues that the Santa Claus did where he's just all of a sudden better. And it, it's a little bit better than that. Like in the Santa Claus, it's very abrupt. Like Scott Calvin is just, ta-da, he's better, he's Santa Claus, he loves the magic, whatever, where there is a little bit more visual development in Michael's character in this film, but for the most part, it's still very similar. The growth of his character is still really disjointed and not like an arc, it's just kind of like, oh, like he's making jokes and doesn't care about Mimi, and then it's like, oh, there's a moment where he cares about Mimi, and then he's back to like, completely not caring about Mimi. And then there's like, oh, there's a moment where he cares about Mimi. And then it's like completely back to not caring about Mimi. And then it's like, I love Mimi. He's my son. I want to be with him. And I think that might be affected by Tim Allen's humor in the film. And don't get me wrong. There are some jokes that are funny. You know, Tim Allen's got some one-liners that are funny. But then there's also parts of the film that are supposed to be for comedic effect that are just completely unnecessary and they could have taken that time to tell a better story in my opinion like the whole scene where the cat gets drugged by the stupid dart and i get they're trying to build up the dart and it's like a thing between mimi and his dad michael i, I get that but the whole scene with the cat was just like that went on too well like what's the point of that other than to make families and kids laugh and like i get that sometimes you need those kinds of scenes but there was also another one like that there were just lots of scenes where it was just like like the spider going into the boss's scene and like they don't notice a tarantula crawling on the ground 
and why all of a sudden Michael's acting so weird. Like that kind of stuff is obviously just for comedic effect and not really driving the story. I also was reminded of Man of the House, the one with Chevy Chase and Jonathan Taylor Thomas, which is funny because <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas is in uh, Home Improvement, which is Tim Allen's famous TV show. But Man of the House had that whole storyline where like Chevy Chase was being chased by like those mafia guys, the bad guys, the criminals, and like held Chevy up during his camping trip with JTT. And there was a similar storyline in this one where Jovanovich, like the mafia boss, wanted these stock shares or whatever about for coffee. And he like is bad and it's the mafia and like holds up the family and like it's a whole thing that is completely unnecessary for the story they're telling. They're telling a story about Michael being a bigwig and having this whole life and he finds out he has a son and he falls in love with his son and wants to be in his son's life. Like that's the story they're telling but on the side of it they throw in like the mafia boss because they think that's the only way they can make Michael and Mimi completely 100% bonded. And I get that, that there's like a high threat situation and that will bond people. But what I think is a more interesting story, at least me personally at 26 years old, is if we have like something more dramatic with Charlotte happen. Like, you know, like in the parent trap, how she says it's me or them and he's like, them like are you kidding they're my children like if it built up to that like she was terrible to Mimi Siku and Mimi Siku wanted to leave and you know all this dramatic stuff happens and then Michael is like well get out like that's my son and she can be like well you've only known him for you know four days and he can be like I don't care that's my kid like you know that would have and then Mimi seeing Michael do that would have been the bond. Like, you don't need the mafia to, like, bond them. You know what I mean? Like, that would have been a way more interesting story to me. Like, dealing with... Mimi dealing with the city and being homesick because he grew up in a place that has zero technology, zero, like, everything that a modern civilization has. I'd be much more interested in him dealing with that and Michael dealing with, like figuring out the new relationship with it. Like, that would have been a way more heartwarming, um, not worthy, but worthwhile story than the mafia is here. And also the romance between Karen and Mimi. Why do we gotta do that? Why, why can't we just have a movie where a kid gets discovered by his dad and they have to like bond, like a found family movie where they like learn to love each other and they're like, oh crap, like we really love each other, this is amazing. And you know, or something like that. Why you gotta throw in like Karen and why you gotta throw in the mafia? Like it's just stuff that's completely unnecessary to telling a story that can still be entertaining and funny. Like The Parent Trap, the 1998 version of The Parent Trap. I think, I don't know why this is reminding me of that, but probably because of the whole step parent making them choose thing. I think it's very entertaining, but it still is very focused on the family aspect of it. And there are jokes and stuff, like when they send Meredith on the air mattress and like stuff like that, but it's all a part, like it's gonna cause and affect the story. And I don't know, just whatever, I digress. It reminded me of Man in the House with the whole like criminal bonding thing, which was very weird, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Also, it ended on a freeze frame. <laughs> and I feel like a lot more movies are starting to end on a freeze frame and I feel like freeze frame might be our new car chase <laughs> because it's just like every movie ends on a freeze frame and it's hysterical in perfect honesty. That's everything I have for Jungle to Jungle. This movie was better than I expected, but it's still not amazing. I forgot to say that the music in the goodbye scene was so good. Michael Convertino, you outdid yourself in that scene. It was excellent, the music in that scene. Um, our My final rating is six darts out of 10. Our total movie count is Parents at and Crack Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie you're watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie you're watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join my Patreon. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. You're getting vlogs and Mickey patrons. You're getting a private vlog this month. Also, everybody, super, super, super exciting surprise on Saturday. 
like mega amazing. I'm so freaking excited for the announcement and everything that's happening on Saturday. So be sure to tune in on Saturday because ah. until next time, comment, like, share, don't drive you are to you and don't be the mafia about it. Surprise, surprise, surprise on Saturday. 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 Oh, I'm so excited.